At University of Virginia Health System, we're for sharing the latest health information from top minds to keep you and your family healthy. With UVA Health System Radio, here's Melanie Cole. In June 1967, the UVA Transplant Center transplanted its first solid organ, a kidney. My guest today is Dr. Alden Doyle. He's a transplant nephrologist and the medical director of the kidney transplant program at UVA's Charles O. Strickler Transplant Center. Welcome to the show, Dr. Doyle. Tell us a little bit about the Transplant Center at UVA and the 50th anniversary coming up in 2017. Give us a little background on the evolution of kidney transplantation over the years. Uh, sure. So the the program is a well-established one that uh, does most of all the solid organs. So they have a robust program in heart transplant in kidney transplant and pancreas transplant and lung transplant and a separate one in bone marrow. So almost all the normal organs that are transplanted, they have um, been innovators in the field for years with tissue typing and different organ transplant techniques. And there's a lot of nice overlap. Uh, So they've been in the business for a long time and recently have uh, with a new dean who is a lung transplant specialist himself have really put a lot of resources to make all the transplant programs go under one transplant institute and continue to grow and be innovators in the field. In terms of history of transplant, um, we've come a long way. As you know, uh, in the mid-50s, the original transplant was basically reserved for very healthy folks who had living donors. And uh, so the immunosuppression was was, uh, very modest and the understanding of how the immune system works to keep uh, one healthy and to reject organs was only very rudimentary. So it was really only available for a few folks under special circumstances. And now, with lots of medicines and a lot greater understanding, it's available to not all, but many people with uh, different kinds of organ disease and different backgrounds. So there's so many organs that you transplant now, and UVA is the only comprehensive transplant center in Virginia with more than 45 years of experience. Dr. Doyle, speak about some of the other organs that are transplanted. What people should look for when looking for a transplant center? So I think there's a couple things you can look at. There's publicly available data. Um, So there's an organization that the government um, funds, it's, uh, and, and supervises, which is called United, or- uh, United Network for Organ Sharing, or UNOS. And so they have the responsibility of maintaining uh, oversight for transplant programs across the country and publish on the website um, the outcomes. So I think one, one question a, a potential transplant recipient would ask is, how do they do? And if I get transplanted to the center, how do, would I expect to survive and how would that, the function of the organ work? So they publish one- and three-year patient and graft survival as a first pass. On top of that, I think you'd want to, you'd want a comprehensive center that can offer the broad, broad range of services, including overlap of, kit of disease. So often we see that patients have not just kidney disease but also liver disease, and so it's nice to have uh, one center that can manage things from soup to nuts and even up to the, the unusual circumstance of requiring two organs at once. What do you anticipate the future holds for kidney transplantation? Well, our hope is a couple of things. One is, you know, one of the biggest problems we have, and, and we're victims of our own success in a way, we have uh, the one-year survival, graft survival and patient survival has gone steadily up. Uh, and so, and there's a lot, as I said, mentioned before, there's a lot more uh, folks who are potential candidates. And so with organ donation rates being reasonably flat, they've grown a little bit, then there's a bigger uh, disparity between need for organs and availability of suitable organs. So we hope that there's going to be continued public advocacy for donation, different ways to do this, but to increase the supply because there's a growing number of people who die waiting for organs, even though that if they know if they got transplanted, they'd be successful, but they just isn't enough to go around. So that's a piece of it. Part of it is public advocacy, I mean, um, uh, public policy. So there's some things we hope Congress will do to make uh, living donation and organ transportation even easier. They've been supportive, but there's some important steps to make right now. 
And uh, there's also a lot of science in immunology and uh, related fields like genomics and proteomics that we hope will translate into better outcomes for transplants so we have more of an individualized medicine. We know that different people respond to medications and the and have different risk of rejection, but why that is in all circumstances is less clear. So going forward, if we could make an individual plan so that this this combination of medications and this organs would be the best for an individual patient, that would be a real step forward in, in keeping with kind of the way, the direction of modern medicine. So can you tell us about any breakthroughs in post-transplant care? There's been some. Uh, it's been incremental. I wouldn't call it absolute break, breakthrough. There's some been there, there's been some um, uh, new medications that uh, change the paradigm of immunosuppression. So there are, for example, there's some um, medications people can get once a month by IV. That's never been possible before. Uh, there's been some work to try to promote tolerance where under certain circumstances patients would not require immunosuppression, although it's the exception, but it's exciting stuff. Dr. Doyle, what factors are considered in organ matching and allocation? How does that matching process work? Um, a number of things. It's, it's um, complicated and simple. The, the, in kidneys, unlike other organs, the primary driver for allocation of kidneys, in other words, who gets which kidney, is based on time on the wait list. So uh, recently that's been undergone a big change, and so now the time counts back to when either you get listed or when you start a dialysis, whichever is first, because some people used to wait years before they came in to get evaluated. So the time is the number one thing. There are some immunologic factors, another degree of matching for the human leukocyte system, this HLA system. So you get points for certain types of matching where if the, if the kidney is a better match, you go, you would get the equivalent of more time. And then there's some special circumstances where... Um, you, your body may have immune barriers to block kidney transplants, which makes it harder, and so you're given a special dispensation. So that's the normal thing. And then kids get special kids get transplanted earlier because they know that the kidney failure doesn't allow them to grow normally. And uh, so there's a couple of special circumstances, but it's mostly driven by time. How does somebody get on the waiting list? So you come into a center. You have to have either be on dialysis or uh, should be importantly noted that you can have 20% kidney function or less. So the best circumstance is as soon as you hit 20% per function, before you go on dialysis, which usually occurs in around 10% function, you get into a transplant center and get listed quickly because that pushes the time clock going earlier. The evaluation process always involves a multidisciplinary approach. That's a dietitian, that's a social worker, that's a transplant coordinator, which is a nurse or a nurse practitioner, the nef transplant nephrologist like me and a surgeon, so we all work together in concert to try to make a decision about who is the candidate or, more importantly, what things we need to get people ready so they're the best candidate that they can be. That is exciting. And tell us about the Transplant Center. Tell us about your approach to patient-centered care. What can a patient expect? Because that's a very scary thought, but yet very hopeful and exciting. Yeah, so we try to take the broad view, and that is once upon a time, transplant centers were largely happy to have the success of transplant. So the focus was always on the numbers and getting people through the operation and getting them, you know, getting them out a year or three years. And I think as we got better, we still want those are really obviously very important metrics, but there's more to that. So I'm trying to push for patient center, patient centered approach, which means. Yes, we want the numbers to look good, but we also really want to take a person through a journey from a point of end-stage organ disease and kidney in this, in this case all the way through to health because kidney transplant and other organs too is a special case where people can really know what it's like to be sick, sometimes deathly ill, on dialysis, and they see some people that, you know, some make it and some don't, and you can give them the second chance and unlike things where other where people have kind of a revelation at the end of their lives or the final days of life, and it may only be true for a short time, people could have, we've had kidney transplantations who've lasted 40 years. So you can have somebody who gets very close to being very, very sick and have the knowledge that that, that brings, the wisdom that that brings sometimes, and, and then get a second chance and be able to live that second chance for potentially decades. So um, as we go forward, I'd like to, Continue, you know, continue to to manage the 
nuts and bolts of transplant, but also increasingly focus on the human aspect, which is this is really a wonderful celebration of life and a second chance. Wow, such great information. Thank you for all the great work that you're doing, Dr. Doyle. You're listening to UVA Health Systems Radio, and for more information, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for listening.